In today's video, I want to show you my top 10 tips and tricks and jigs I've made to make my modeling more efficient. The first one is something to hold your glue and keep it from tipping over. If you use glue like this, which I think a lot of modelers probably do, um, even though it's a nice wide bottom, you'd think I couldn't tip it over. Well, I have. So I decided to come up with a way to try to avoid that because it's not all that cheap and it smells pretty bad when it spills. So I made the, a holder for it, just took some two by fours, cut to the width and screwed them together and put a base on it. So now it fits, it's easy to move around and it will not tip over. The other good thing I realized is when I put the cap back on, if I'm usually holding something in the model, I can put it on with one hand and tighten it because the base is strong enough to hold it from rotating where if I was on the bench all by itself, I couldn't do that. This item is useful for holding paint also so it doesn't spill over. It's uh, pretty easy to have something spill. So I went to my workshop, put together two pieces of wood so that it was deeper, thicker, and then with Forstner bits, drilled these holes according to the sizes that I thought I'd use. So these washes fit perfectly there. These little bottles I use fit in there and I can hold up to three at a time. So then as I work, I'm not worried about them tipping over. Another tip is how to work with small details. This item is a rosin casting of a 55 gallon drum. And what I did was drill a hole in it the size of the toothpick, almost the complete diameter, but enough that when I jam it in there, it stuck. And this makes it so much easier to paint and hold on to. And I'm able to do the whole thing. You can just paint, uh, dip your brush in paint, spin the barrel and paint it, and then put it in a piece of styrofoam to hold it there while it's drying. So let's say you're gluing things up and you're using super glue. The own applicator is small, but still difficult to deposit very little quantities into very small spaces and avoid a large clump of glue that ends up visible after you're done. So one way to do it is put the glue on a little bit of glue on the surface, like a scrap piece of paper, and then you need a small applicator that you can dip into the glue and then onto the piece, just to, no more than you need. And it really doesn't take much for super glue. So a tip I got from a friend was take a dowel, drill a hole in the end, and then insert a regular sewing needle. So the eye of the needle will hold a little bit of the glue and you can just dab it on the spot that you need and be sure you're getting no more than necessary. So that's a real good glue applicator. Another issue with, with glue, besides the tipping over part, other glues like PVA glues, when they get near the bottom or even just halfway filled or less, if you're always storing it upright, when it comes time to use it, you have to wait for it to come down to the bottom. I took a square block of wood, drilled a large hole with a Forstner bit, and then a smaller hole with a, with a smaller bit. And that allows for the cap 
in the nozzle. And when I need it, it's always ready to go. So let's say you're gluing walls together or some kind of structure and you need them to be 90 degrees to each other. This engineer's block you can usually find usually in woodworking supply stores but it works very well. It's very heavy so it's not going to move on you. It's a great way to set walls at 90 degrees and you can clamp them if you need to but it's absolutely perfectly square in all dimensions. You can also, if you need it taller, you can turn it up that way. That's very handy. What if you're doing a post, let's say, and you want it to be 90 degrees, of course, to the base, so it's perfectly straight out, but you also can't have it tilted this way. So it might be 90 degrees as far as this dimension, but not this way. So, again, and you can probably tell, I woodworking is another hobby, but I took a block of wood, set my table saw at 45 degrees, and ran this piece of wood through this way, and then obviously the opposite way. Now, when I put this on the table, I can put my post in there, and it will, and hold it that way while the glue sets, and it will ensure that it is 90 degrees in both dimensions. Very simple, easy, and keeps you from ending up with a post that isn't straight and it becomes obvious immediately. If you're modeling something and trying to make it look realistic as far as weathering, look online for samples. And so what I do is usually find something similar. I wanted to build this corrugated shack and wanted it rusted. So I found some pictures online and printed them out to uh, give me some ideas. Then when, they, when you're actually painting them, it gives you a good idea of what's realistic. Maybe you're doing old worn wood. I found several of these. These actually are pictures I took when I was down in the Smokies, thought, oh, this is the kind of wood I want. And there's several different colors. You know, there's brown, there's gray, there's blackish. Um, there's examples of how they're applied to the walls in uneven patterns. So you can get, get lots of ideas from these pictures because at least for me, if I'm doing it all on my own, it doesn't feel as it turns out as realistic as when I follow uh, some pictures like this that give me ideas of how it really looks in nature. Now when you're mixing paints, you may have to mix a small amount, blending a couple colors, or you're just making a wash. And if you need uh, something to put that in, these little medicine cups are a great idea. They're super cheap. You can get a hundred for a few dollars and they'll last a long time because of course you can wash them out and reuse them. They also fit well in this non-spill base we made. So medicine cups. If you've ever worked on a project with a lot of small detail parts that you want to paint, you'll know how difficult it is to hold them individually without dropping them and making sure you get paint on all sides. So I've learned I can take some coffee stir sticks or cut my own piece of wood into small strips, place some double-sided tape down over several of them at one time, assuming you need a lot of different sticks, leave two or three inches to use as a handle, then you can flip it over, cut them apart individually on the back side, and you'll end up with several sticks you can use to hold and handle the parts. Peel the tape off, 
and take the parts which usually have a bottom side that will not be seen and you can put that down on the tape just press them in and they'll stay there be sure you leave some room in between them for your paintbrush or airbrush make sure you can get to all sides of them then once they're attached they won't fall off you can spray them all at once if you want like I'm giving them a base coat here you can turn them to make sure you get all sides don't worry about them falling off and you can work on them individually paint each of the parts hopefully this will help make it easier to do your detail modeling